So what's it like to play a six foot two inch person as a four foot odd dwarf? He's five foot two. Is he five foot He's two? He's five foot two. <gasps> it's now not see? that small, is it? It's not really. that small. How tall are you? I'm about five five. Okay, so, so it's not, not that. He's three inches shorter no, than you're you. Absolutely right. Tall for a dwarf. But you're very tall. I am. I, it's a it's a foot less than me, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it but it, it is, is, isn't it? Kind of a lot. Yes. Yeah. Do you have to? Did you have to carry yourself differently physically? Yeah. I mean, it's part of. It's it, the height thing with the dwarf was never was never the focus. It was all about the weight. They, they have different skeletons. They're much thicker, heavier bones. Their center of gravity is lower. Um, their shoulders are broader. They're, the animal that I always imagined for Thorin was a bison, that really kind of thick set, kind of upper body shape um, that would run and break down a wall with his head. <laughs> That's a good image. Now, the uh, relationship between you and between Thorin and Bilbo is a bit complicated. Can you tell us how you, about bringing those moments to life with Martin? That was. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it is complicated and complex, and, and one never really knows how it's going to manifest itself according to the edit and the cut and the choices that Pete makes after we've shot. So we really did shoot many choices for him so that he can shape that relationship as much as we could. Um, but what's interesting to me, especially having seen the film, is the way that Bilbo enables Thorin to really see who, to see himself and to make changes in himself and to accept him. To, you know, he was very anti-Hobbit in movie one. He, re he starts to realize that, that Bilbo is his greatest asset. And that relationship becomes m much more intense in movie three where he becomes a single confidant. So um, seeing that evolve through movie, movie two is really interesting. Can you talk about Thorin's journey as he gets so close to his goal yet faces all these obstacles like the elves and the giant spiders and what he's going through? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I think in, this, in this middle piece, you really see Thorin at his lowest point and, and at his highest point as well. You know, being captured by Thranduil and thrown into his dungeon, stripped of every possible means he has to get to the mountain and finish his quest is possibly the lowest he'll ever come um, to getting to the door and opening it and breathing the air of Erebor once more it's that moment is fills him with such joy such achievement but mixed into that is the danger that he then has to face now what has the experience of working with Peter Jackson been like for you um, it's really changed me I think as an actor I think it's it's made me lighten up a bit you know, have a bit more fun if I can, uh, to not ever underestimate the imagination and that sense of play, um, and to never really disregard anything. You know, any idea is valid, and, and uh, you know, bring it to the to the playground and, and throw it in there and see if it works. Now, uh, was there any sequence or particular scene? Um, I think uh, I think the moment when they when they enter the mountain is I really enjoyed playing it because for the rest of the journey it's it's thrills and spills and fighting and action and, and uh, adventure and this is one moment which was very still and sacred and spiritual and, and I really enjoyed this, the location that they built for us the set and just that feeling of, of opening the door it's everything they've wished for and and uh, it was a great. It's a great moment for for Thorin and the dwarves. Now, was this? Um, did this give you a deeper understanding? I would imagine of the book itself after you know filming this story. Were you familiar with the books before? Yeah, um, I looked at the books when I was maybe seven years old. Um, it took me to his other works and to Peter's films. Um, I haven't actually been back and looked at the books since filming, but. Uh, but it would be interesting to do that, I think, to, to sort of relive it through back to Tolkien's words. And how is traveling to New Zealand and working with the other uh, film talent? Is that a good experience? It's possibly the best part of the job, really. You know, the fact that I get to do this incredible role in a movie that I'm, I'm dying to be in 
and to then shoot it in a place that I've never been to before. It's the other side of the planet. It's um, the most spectacular, pristine wilderness I've ever been to. It's, um, it doesn't really get much better than that.